Hey, Shalom family, Most High in Christ, bless Officer Abishai with IUIC Indiana. Hey, we need y'all to subscribe. Subscribe to our Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube, our Twitter. Let's get them numbers up and give us a like on the video. Most High Christ, bless. Yes, sir. Teachers and leaders everywhere, all praises to the Most High. Hey, y'all, I'm Officer Abishai, IUIC Indiana. To my left. Officer Raphael. It's my brother right there, Officer Raphael in Indiana. All right, y'all, Mid Morning Medicine. We're going to get into it. The title of today's class is Don't Be the Leaven. All right. Um, don't be the leaven as Passover starts to approach. Some of us are new, right? Some of us have not been through the process of Passover. We don't understand the symbolism as well as the literal things that went on with Passover. Uh, and we're going to go through some of those and show you how us as Israel, we're just going through the same circle over and over again. That's what today's class is, right? And we want to start to really cast out that leaven. Um, we want to start casting that leaven out so that we could be better and so that we can obtain that kingdom that we lost. And that's just really what it is, man. All right. So we'll start off in the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 1 and verse 9. We got a lot of reading today. Yes, sir. Ready. Right. Let's, get <laughs> let's, it. let's get it. It's the book of Exodus chapter 1 and verse 9. Uh -huh. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. This is a new Pharaoh that newly raised up in Egypt. They took a counsel and they said, Look, the children of Israel is more and mightier than we are. And when you look at just that verse all in itself, they treat us the same way today. They know that we're more. They know that we're mightier than what they are. So here's the solution for the nations. What Egypt did here, all of the nations that had us in captivity followed this same blueprint. Go ahead. Come on. Let us deal wisely with them. Listen, he said, let us deal wisely with the children of Israel. Go ahead. Lest they multiply and they come to pass that when there falleth out any war, they join also unto our enemies uh -huh. and fight against us and so get them up out of the land. He said, come on, let us deal wisely with them. So this is going way back to Egypt where the nations that ruled over us understood that they had to deal wisely with us, meaning that they had to deal crafty with us. Get that Psalms 83. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 83 and verse 3. Uh -huh. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people uh -huh. and consulted against thy hidden ones. When you read up, it names these nations that have taken crafty counsel against us, that have consulted against us. How did they consult against us? The first thing that the uh, Egyptians did was they put us in slavery. Right. They put us in slavery. When we're in slavery, they took our names. They took our ability to read and write and reason. Right. They stripped the unity out of us as a people. They had us fighting amongst each other. When, when, when Moses slayed the Egyptian for the brother, the brothers came and said, what you going to do, slay me next? Right. Clear signs that they were able to strip the unity out of us as a people. What else? They religion? It was more than just the Israelites went into slavery, y'all. When we went into slavery under the Egyptians, we also left the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Right. We served they gods, Horus, Ra, Seti. That is a lot, a lot of these Negroes still trying to serve today. You got to think in the slavery we did in America, they did the same type of destruction. Same thing with politics. You don't think that they had uh, up and coming pharaohs that wanted to rule and certain slave masters that was better than other slave masters. And you had the Uncle Toms and you had the Coons. You had all of that. And it was all shown. It, it manifested itself once we went into the wilderness. And we're going to get to that. All right. Go back to Exodus. Read verse 11. It's the book of Exodus, chapter 1 and verse 11. Therefore, they did set over them taskmasters. Negroes in higher authority. Just like, hey, if you, what's the, uh, goodbye, Uncle Tom? Yes, sir. Negroes in high authority. They put their own people over them. Why? To create division and separation. Is the Willie Lynch letter before the Willie Lynch letter even came up. Go ahead. To afflict them with their burdens. Uh -huh. And they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Python, and Ramesses. Let's jump. Jump to verse 13. Verse 13. 
and the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor. He, they made us to serve with rigor. Go ahead. And they made their lives bitter with hard bondage. The hard bondage is that chattel slavery. That chattel slavery we had to go through in Egypt. Go ahead. In mortar and in brick. Now, the main thing that we did in Egypt was work through mortar and brick. So we actually built the bricks that they used in order to build various cities and structures, right? You could even read this in some of the ancient and in, in the history books. Go ahead. And in all manner of service in the field. It said the mortar and brick and all manners of service through the field. Just like we picked cotton, but we picked tobacco, right. and we picked sugarcane, and we built the White House, and right. we built roads, and we built the railroad system. So it was a various, we was in the field picking cotton, that's that famous thing. But what the children of Israel did was literally built up Egypt the same way we built up America. It's the same thing. Right. And our attitudes that we had in Egypt are the same attitudes that we have in America. And we're going we gonna to continue to, to read on that. Go ahead. What we at? All their service, wherein they made them serve, was with rigor. It was with rigor. Judith 5 and 11. Give me Judith 5 and 11. All the service that they made them serve was with rigor. All right. It's the book of Judith. Chapter 5 and verse 11. Uh -huh. Therefore, the king of Egypt rose up against them and dealt subtly with them uh -huh. and brought them low with laboring and brick. Listen, he brought us low. He beat us down with the labor and the brick that he gave us. Used that body so bad physically that mentally they were broken. Go ahead. And made them slaves. And made them what? Slaves. That was the main thing that we were in Egypt. We were slaves. He made us slaves. Now watch this. Today we read Deuteronomy 28 in the Bible and we look at it and be like, dang, the Lord said he was going to do this to us. He said he was going to do that to us. And now look, and it came to pass. Watch this. Genesis 15 and 13. Get Genesis chapter 15 and verse 13. Because guess what? Abraham taught Isaac, who taught Jacob. Jacob taught our forefathers what the prophecies were and what God said. Look at what the prophecies were. Go ahead. It's the book of Genesis, chapter 15 and verse 13. Uh huh. And he said unto Abram, know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs. He said they're going to have to go to a land that's not theirs. Go ahead. And shall serve them. And they shall afflict them 400 years. So you got to imagine them... <laughs> Them in Egypt doing the same thing we doing today. Right. They like, man, it's the same. This is what the Lord told our forefather Abraham, granddaddy Abraham, was going to happen. He said we was going to be in this land and we was going to have to serve them for 400 years. Yes, sir. Now today we sitting back, we reading Deuteronomy 28 like, dang, man, the Lord told us this was going to happen. Yes. These things, the curses, the way that the Lord operate, the way he worked, man, I'm telling you. The same thing repeats itself over and over and over and over again. Yes, sir. Get Exodus chapter 3. Let's get some more details on this. Exodus chapter 3, read verse 7. It's the book of Exodus chapter 3 and verse 7. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which so, are in Egypt. So now we're at the point where the Lord has seen our affliction over the course of the 400 years. And now he about to put in some action. Why? To free his people. Watch this. Come on. And have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. Mm -hmm. For I know their sorrows. And I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians. He said, and now I've come to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians. Go ahead. And to bring them up out of that land. Uh-huh. Unto a good land and a large Unto a land flowing with milk and honey. Listen, the same promises that's here that our forefathers and that our foremothers hoped for, we find ourselves in slavery, in captivity right now, hoping for the exact same thing. So how did we get back in this position again is what we got to ask ourselves, brothers and sisters. And how do we stop repeating the cycle? Keep reading on that. Unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Parasites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Verse 9. Verse 9. 
Now, therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is coming to me. You know, you know how we do that by following what our bishops tell us by right. praying three times a day. Right. That's that cry of the children of Israel that's going up to the Lord three mm -hmm. times a day constantly. Where do you think the bishops them getting that from? Right. Right out of the scriptures. Right out of the scriptures. Go ahead. And I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Look, in Egypt, they had they Trayvon Martin. Right. Straight. They had they Sandra Bland. Mm -hmm. They had they Mike Brown. Yep. It might not be named, but it just said with rigor. Then you start reading. You read about who was. OK, so when the Egyptian was striking and beating on the Israelite man. What is that today? Exactly. Why do you think Moses acted? You don't think he got tired of seeing his people get beat down? The same oppressions of Egypt is right here in spiritual Egypt, Babylon, the great America. It it's all here. Bring it up. It's all here. Get Baruch chapter four, chapter three and verse four. The similarities between how we had how we had to live in Egypt and how we got to live in America is the same, y'all. Come on. This is the book of Baruch, chapter 3 and verse 4. Mm -hmm. O Lord Almighty, thou God of Israel, hear now the prayers of the dead Israelites. How are we dead? We're dead spiritually. Not physically dead, but spiritually we dead. The things that we do are not our customs. What we celebrate are not our customs. Right. What we eat are not our customs. Right. The way we educate our children are not our customs. Right. The, the, the simple way that we ha have to buy food, that we have to uh, uh, go and buy seeds to plant crops. And you look at Monsanto and all of these other major corporations. None of this is our custom. That's why we dead. Baruch said, hit the prayers of the dead Israelites. Go ahead. And of their children, uh -huh. which I've sinned before thee. He said, hear our prayers, even though we in sin. Go ahead. And not hearken unto the voice of thee, uh -huh. their God. Which what? For the which caused these plagues cleave unto us. He said, because of this, the plagues cleave to us. Verse 7. Verse 7. And for this cause, thou hast put thy fear in our hearts. Listen, because we sin, God have to put fear in our hearts. Go ahead. To the intent that we should call upon thy name uh -huh. and praise thee in our captivity. And that's what we were doing. That's what we were, we were praying to God, swing low, sweet chariot way back in Egypt. And we've been singing it here in America the same way. Bring it out. Go ahead. For we have called to mind all the iniquity of our forefathers uh -huh. that sinned before thee. Mm -hmm. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity. Right now, we still in captivity. Right. Now, we're not in shacks and we don't have to uh, walk around with holes uh, in our shoes or right. with chains on our neck. But Baruch understood that as long as they weren't in their land, they were still in captivity. Yes, sir. And what? Where thou hast scattered us. Because the Lord sent us here. Just like he put the conditions in place for our forefathers to all 70 of them to walk their behind in Egypt so that they could serve the 400 years under Pharaoh. Right. Go ahead. For a reproach and a curse uh -huh. to be subject to payment. To be what? Subject to payment. Man, paycheck to paycheck. Right. <laughs> exactly. That thing. Hey, they, they released the slaves, then gave them just enough money for them to stay in servitude. Right. Go ahead. According to all the iniquities of our fathers, which departed from the Lord our God. According to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28. According to that. Go back to Exodus, chapter 3, verse 15. It's the book of Exodus, chapter 3 and verse 15. And God said, Moreover unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me unto you. This is my name forever. Listen, so he said, Make sure that you tell them that your God sent them. Listen, whenever the Israelites was in trouble, Whenever we were living wrong, whenever it was time to deliver us, the Lord never just came down by himself, beat everybody up and sent us out. No, he always sent leaders. 
just like today the Lord has sent leaders to be able to guide us and bring us back to the Lord. Give me that, Nehemiah chapter 9 and verse 27. Every time when we cry to the Lord, remember the scripture say the Lord himself doeth nothing, but he revealeth his secrets to the serve to his servants, the prophets. Mm -hmm. And the Lord giving us prophets in these last days, Israel. That's right. And we gotta have a faith and a belief and the respect and the honor to recognize when the Lord's prophets are back on the earth. Read that. It's the book of Nehemiah, chapter 9 and verse 27. Therefore, thou deliverest them into the hand of their enemies uh -huh. who vexed them and in the time of their trouble and in the time when we were being jacked up go ahead when they cried unto thee uh -huh. thou heardest them from heaven uh -huh. and according to thy manifold mercies thou gave them saviors that gave us what saviors your prophets your bishops right your deacons right your captains right he gave us prophets to change the mind of the people, to bring the people back to the Lord. Right. Just like he did with Moses, just like he did with Aaron in the wilderness. I mean, in Egypt. Go ahead. Who saved them out of the hand of their enemies. Uh huh. But after they had rest, they did evil again before thee. It, and it didn't matter. Right. As soon as he gave us a little rest, guess what we did? Right back to folly. Just cross the Red Sea, we make gold calves. Right. I want the Lord said this time, I ain't taking everybody. That's why you don't want to be the leaven. Because <laughs> he ain't taking everybody next time. Right. He ain't taking everybody. Go ahead. Therefore, leftest thou them in the hand of their enemies, uh -huh. so that they had the dominion over them. Uh-huh. Yet, when they returned and cried unto thee. Yet, every time we repent. Go ahead. Thou heardest them from heaven, uh -huh. and many times didst thou deliver them according to thy mercy. And he keep doing it over and over again, delivering right. us according to his mercy. Not right. because we deserve it, not because we didn't got everything right. No, it's like it's like you got a kid, you know they bad, you keep whooping them. But I mean, all right, he's trying to do better now, let me go get him. Right. All right, bro, you can get off punishment, then find out he's skipping school. Yeah. Got to put you back, I got to get you back on it. Right. That's the children of Israel in the sight of God. Every time we get afflicted, we run to God, God help us. And what we do, go right back to the folly. Yep. Go right back to the folly. So the Lord started preparing the way. He sent us the prophets. He sent us uh, saviors to get us out of captivity. And thus the Passover starts to come to fruition. So he starts to plague Egypt. If you all go back, you should go back to last Passover's class that Bishop Nathaniel did and listen to how the Lord is sending them same plagues that was in Egypt on America today. Heavy, heavy class. And he's sending them same plagues because guess what? We in, we in Egypt, we in spiritual Egypt doing the right. same thing we did in so, real Egypt, y'all. The same thing. Get Exodus 12 and uh, 3. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 12 and verse 3. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, uh -huh. In the tenth day of this month, they shall take them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, uh -huh. a lamb for an house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house Take it according to the number of the souls. Every man, according to his eating, shall make your count for the lamb. Uh -huh. Your lamb shall be without blemish. Listen to what it says. It said, your lamb shall be without blemish. In, in Egypt, he gave, he gave us a commandment to have a lamb without blemish. Go ahead. A male of the first year, you uh -huh. shall take it out from the sheep or from the goat. Take it out from the sheep or the goat. So today... We know we had a Passover. We know we eat the lamb, but our real lamb is the lamb of God. Right. It's Jesus the Christ. Get that. First Peter chapter one and verse 19. I'm telling y'all, we going through the same thing, but this time it's going to be based off faith. This time it's going to be based off whether you right there that's listening to my voice right now is keeping the commandments or not. That's what this is going to boil down to. Go ahead. It's the book of first Peter 
chapter 1 and verse 19. Uh -huh. But with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb. As a what? As of a lamb uh -huh. without blemish. You see that? The precious blood of Christ is as a lamb without blemish. Is that it on that? And without spot. And without spot. Give me 1 Peter chapter 2 and 21. I'm going to show you what it means that Christ is this lamb without blemish and without spot. You got it? Yes, sir. This is the book of 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 21. Uh-huh. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us. Leaving us an example. Christ suffered for us, leaving us an example. Go ahead. That you shall follow his steps. Who did no sin. Who did no what? No sin. Uh-huh. Neither was Gal found in his mouth. So Christ was the lamb without blemish because he didn't do like a lot of us did. Right. He did no sin. Bring it out. Neither was Gal found in Christ's mouth. He is that lamb without blemish. Sir. Hebrews chapter 4, 15. The book of Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 15. One more on the Christ. That's why I, I really, really, you want to irritate me? Show me something that say Christ ain't real. Right. Like, I just don't understand. Like, Christians believe in white Jesus. Right. More than brothers and sisters believe in Jesus the Christ, the black Messiah. Right. The one that died for the sins of the nation. Anybody that don't believe in Christ, man, you just, you have not studied the Bible. You have not, and you don't believe the Bible. You cannot do both. Go ahead. It's the book of Hebrews, chapter 4, and verse 15. Uh-huh. For we have not a high priest, which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmity. Because Christ walked the earth, he know what it's like to be tempted in everything. Go ahead. But was in all points tempted like as we are. See what I'm saying? He was tempted in everything that we get tempted on, but what? Yet without sin. Yet a lamb without blemish. Yet a lamb without blemish. Right. All right. From there, give me Exodus chapter 16. So the Lord gave us Christ, which was the lamb without blemish. He gave us the unleavened bread. When you continue to read down in Exodus 12, we already 30 minutes in. We're going to have to skip some stuff. <laughs> I told you, bro. I, I got a lot. Uh, we're going to jump a little bit. Exodus 16, 1 and 2. It's the book of Exodus chapter 16 and verse 1. I want to show y'all what we did for the miracles that God gave us. He took us out of captivity. Remember, it said that we, they worked us with rigor. They, bro, they was working the hell out of us. Mm -hmm. So let alone to see, yo, you got to think, right? We all got a job, right? Or ima imagine you a slave 100 years ago. We all got a job where well, our boss is an a-hole. And sometimes you really be like, man, I wish I could just. To see that same guy that afflicted you, that same person that's been doing you dirty. To see the Lord come and destroy him. To see the Lord destroy all of the cities that they forcefully made you build. Right. To see him use Moses and Aaron to perform miracles to get you out of Egypt. Split the sea. You walked on dry land. The scriptures say the grass was green yes, sir. when they walked across. To bring you, and this is, what, this is what we did to thank the Lord. Exodus 16, 1 and 2. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 16 and verse 1. And they took their journey from Elam and all the congregation of the children of Israel came into the wilderness of sin. Uh-huh which is between Elam and Sinai, mm -hmm. on the 15th day of the second month after their departing out of the land of Egypt. When you, uh, this is the 15th day of the second month. Go ahead. This is a month later after we left. So we know. Go ahead. And the whole congregation of the children of Israel. It took us one month, one month for this to become our behavior. Look how quickly we forget. How quickly we forget that we were stepping on that straw and that mud to make bricks. Right. How quickly we forget the Lord bringing all of them frogs and the lice and giving them darkness and killing the cattle. One month later, look at our behavior, Israel. Come on. And the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. It took us one month, one month Dang. before we just start acting up. It ain't even take that long. 
Now I can remember. I can remember thirty days ago, bro. Yes, sir. I can remember. Th we just hit the biblical lottery. Yes, sir. <laughs> And already acting like straight niggas. And it's all 12 tribes, y'all. Yes, sir. There's all, all of us is in there, Dan, with us too. Yes, sir. We wildin' 30 days later, you would think, okay, come on, y'all. The Lord deliver us the way the scriptures say he's gonna deliver us from America. You telling me 30 days later we're gonna be in a wilderness acting a plum fool? 30 days? That's why the Lord said, I can't, I can't take everybody. Right. That's why he said, I'm going to put you back in the wilderness, and I'm going to make you pass under the rod of the covenant. I'm going to have to purge out from you the rebels and them that transgress against me. 30 days. Read, it, read verse 1 again. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 16, and verse 1. And they took their journey from Elam, and all the congregation of the children of Israel came unto the wilderness of sin which is between Elam and Sinai, on the 15th day of the second month after their departing out of the land of Egypt. One month later, y'all. One month later, we already acting up. Give me Numbers chapter 32. Uh, I want Numbers 32 and 11. This is the book of Numbers chapter 32 and verse 11. Surely none of the men that came up out of Egypt from 20 years old. Sorry, when 10. I'm sorry. Read 10. Verse 10. And the Lord's anger was kindled the same time. And he swore, saying, Surely none of the men that came up out of Egypt from 20 years old and upward shall see the land which I swear to Abraham. He said, Look, I'm tired of this. None of y'all going into that promised land. Remember way back in Exodus, he told Moses, go tell the children of Israel, I'm about to take them to the land of milk and honey. Yes, he said, I'm going to take the children of Israel, but I'm not taking these niggas in the wilderness. Yes. They not, no, I'm going to raise up their sons and their daughters, let them go. Because you Negroes complained mm -hmm. 30 days later. Yes, sir. And as you read it, like some of the details... The Lord pulling water out of a rock. Yes, the Lord is raining manna down from heaven that tastes like whatever we wanted it to taste like. Even when he punished us and made us walk in the wilderness, our shoes never fell off our body. Our clothes never disintegrated. You talking about a merciful God for us. We got to be his favorite. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Come on. Shall see the land which I swear unto Abraham. Unto Isaac and unto Jacob, uh -huh. because they have not wholly followed me. He said, because you won't wholly follow me. That's important because right now we're talking about us as a whole, as a nation. But think about you yourself personally. If you wholly follow in the Lord. Go back to Nehemiah chapter. Give me Nehemiah chapter nine. I want verse 28. Nehemiah nine and 28. Let's get a little bit more on this. On the psyche of the Israelites and how God worked with them. Come on. This is the book of Nehemiah, chapter 9 and verse 28. Uh-huh. But after they had rest, they did evil again before thee. Uh-huh. We read this earlier, but I'm gonna read it again. Come on. Therefore, leftest thou them in the hand of their enemies, so that they had the dominion over them. And that's why we getting ruled over all over again. Right. Come on. Yet when they returned and cried unto thee. Thou heardest them from heaven, mm -hmm. and many times didst de thou deliver them according to thy mercy. Keep reading. And testified against them that thou mightest bring them again into thy law. Yet they dealt proudly and hearkened not unto thy commandments. And guess what? You see that with brothers and sisters today. Brothers and sisters find out they Israelites and they just forget about their own sins. Yes, sir. The, now, all of a sudden, everything is the white man is the devil, which he is. Now, all of a sudden, everything is uh, you holier than thou and this and that. Like the Lord could have gave you the same understanding he gave your mama. He could have gave you the same understanding he gave your grandma. You ain't nothing special. I ain't nothing special. Right. It's a blessing for us to understand that we the Israelites. But no, like the scriptures say, we dealing proudly now. Now, all of a sudden, you don't remember when you used to hit the club. Right. And it's even worse than that because it's a lot of sin still sitting in you and you faking the funk. That's why I say that. Read it again. And they what? 
Yet they dealt proudly. Yet they dwelt proudly and hearkened not unto thy commandments, uh -huh. but sinned against thy judgments, uh -huh. which if a man do, he shall live in them, uh -huh. and withdrew the soul. They didn't want to hear what we was talking about, even classes like this. How many classes the bishops them bring out about backdoor marriages? You still got backdoor marriages. How many classes about uh, uh, adultery they bring out? You still got adultery. How many classes about stealing? That come out and brothers are still stealing. He say they turn away the shoulder. Go ahead. And harden their neck and would not hear. Uh-huh. Yet many years did thou forbear them. Yet many years, God, like um, they in slavery. Right. But I ain't gonna let Esau utterly destroy him. Right. He just forbeared us. Scriptures call what we go through a light affliction compared to what we deserve. And you got, when you start realizing we the same spirits that then did this over and over again, come on. And testified against them by thy spirit and thy prophets, yet would they not give ear. And we testified against them how? Going out to camp, setting up at a library, youth violence conflict resolution seminars, doing radio shows all over the country, yes, traveling all over the world to try to bring the gospel. He Sorry. used the prophets to do these things, just like it's all written in the Bible. We live in this time again. We have to see that we are living this life again, and it is our time to get it right, brothers and sisters. Don't beat 11 this time. Yes, sir. Come on. Therefore, gavest thou them into the hand of the people of the land. And everywhere that we had scattered across the four corners of the earth, the people of that land rule over us. Yes, sir. But now it's the time to get it right. Now's the time for us to start redeeming ourselves. Leviticus chapter 26. Give me the book of Leviticus chapter 26 and verse 40. This is the book of Leviticus. Time flying. Chapter 26 and verse 40. Come on. If they shall confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers. Just like we did when we was in Egypt. But this time we need to have a level of being genuine with the Lord. Go ahead. With their trespass, uh -huh. which they trespassed against me, uh -huh. and that also they have walked contrary unto me. We have to confess that we walk contrary to God. Right. That's before we put the fringes on and knew we was Israelites, and right now with the fringes on, knowing that we the Israelites. Right. Straight up, because we ain't all right. Y'all know you ain't right. Go ahead. And that I also have walked contrary unto them. A lot of people like especially these other weird religions <laughs> that's out here they like what kind of god would send the people into slavery and what kind right. of god a type of god that punish you for making your mistakes god ain't want to punish you you chose that just like you tell your kid hey i want this room clean i want them dishes washed everything good guess what we're gonna go out to eat this saturday you come in and it's dirty you gonna get the opposite sir what makes you think that you can disobey the God that created the heavens and the earth with no consequences and repercussions? What would make him God then? God ain't doing no gentle parenting. That's that 2024 stuff. You think God do gentle parenting? God don't do no gentle parenting, y'all. God gonna tax that behind for real. He says, so acknowledge y'all messed up and that's why I did what I did. So, I said I was taking you to the land of milk and honey. You was in the wilderness 30 days, already started acting up. So I got to get you. Go ahead. And have bought them into the land of their enemies. Mm -hmm. If then their uncircumcised hearts be humble, mm -hmm. and they then accept of the punishment of their iniquity. You know why you're going to be humble? Because the enemy's neck, foot going to be so far on your neck that you can barely breathe. Freaking and the only person that you can call for a breath of fresh air is the Most High God. Yes, sir. Please send your son Christ back to get me, Lord. Lord Jesus, a pack of chicken wings, $22, Lord. Yes, sir. They charging us for water down here, Lord. <laughs> they say we can't catch the water. Yes, sir. They banning rain catchment systems. They charging taxes on my land after I didn't own the land. Lord, help me. Yes, sir. No matter how far up this ladder I climb, they just add more rungs to the ladder. Yes, 
Sir. They say the middle class is a hundred twenty five thousand dollars. Minimum wage is seven and some change. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, that'll make you repent. Come on. Then will I remember my covenant with Jacob mm -hmm. and also my covenant with Isaac and also my covenant with Abraham. Well, I remember and I will remember the land. Watch this. Lamentations 3 and 40. Let's speed up a little bit. Yes, sir. Book of Lamentations, chapter 3 and verse 40. Ain't no way I'm getting through all of this. But anyway, we're going to get through what we can get through, brothers yes, and sisters. Sir. It's the book of Lamentations, chapter 3 and verse 40. Uh -huh. Let us search and try our ways and turn again to the Lord. You know what it means to search and try your ways? Famous scripture. All Israel know it. Examine yourself. Scripture saying, let us examine ourselves. Examine yourself what you got going on. Hell, you've been here two, three, five, six years, still sitting at home with a wife, ain't never been to the school. Damn. You've been watching porn eight years straight. You've been lusting for how many years straight? Say, come on, man, examine yourself. Sir. Give me Job 13, 23. It, all of this starts with you examining yourself. Because if you can get yourself right, I can get myself right. He can get himself right. The yes, things that we battle in, that we struggle with, we can help each other with. But all that secret sin and hiding it, it's going to come out in the wilderness. You're going to be a part of the murmuring crew. Yes, sir. Ain't no f switch that you just going to be able to flick when Christ come back. And all of a sudden, all of your character and behavior flaws is just perfect now when you know no whatever spirit you got here right now that's the spirit you take into the wilderness yes, sir you don't want to be that leaven come on Job. it's the book of Job, chapter 13 and verse 23 mm -hmm. how many are mine iniquities and sins uh-huh make me to know my transgression you say how many is my iniquities and sin lord make me to know my transgression that's a blessing yes, sir it is a blessing to be able to look at yourself and say, damn, I got this stuff wrong with me. I need to fix myself. You know how many people out there that's justifying being a whoremonger? What they say, a high value man, he can't yes. be with one woman. That ain't according to God. That's according Absolutely. to the wisdom of this world. Absolutely. The Lord say, let every man have his own wife and every woman have her own husband. Yes, sir. Lord, they say nothing about, oh, yeah, but if you make this salary, you can have all of these women because you're the cream of the crop. Like, yeah, what? Men can't examine themselves. The Lord gave you the ability to know that you are Israelite and then gave you the scriptures to be able to fix what is internally wrong with you. Go ahead. Make me to know my transgression and my sin. Uh, that's it? That's it, yes. All sir. right, give me Sirach 18 and 20. Here's why you need to uh, examine yourself. Sirach 18 and verse 20. It's the book of Sirach, chapter 18 and verse 20. Before judgment. Before what? Before judgment. He said, before I come back, do what? Examine thyself. Uh-huh. And in the day of visitation, thou shalt find mercy. You want mercy when Christ comes, because we all going to need mercy. Yes, sir. We all going to need mercy. The, the scriptures tell you how to get that mercy. It says, before judgment, do what? Examine thyself. Say so you better examine yourself. You better examine yourself before somebody always. Well, uh, they don't like me and this and that, and you murmuring, and you always got something negative to say against uh, the leadership. And look, bro, you better examine yourself. <laughs> what category are you fitting in when you read the history? You read your four chapters a day, right? Where you at? What side would you be on? Would you be standing over there with Corey and Dayton? Yes, sir. Or would you be Joshua? Hey, 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 Moses, they still talking about you over there. Hey, what's going on with this over here? What scripture is that? Call that scripture now, again. It's the book of Sirach, chapter 18, verse 20. That's Sirach 18 and 20, and then the one before that was Job 13, 23. Yes, sir. Read it again, 18, 20. It's the book of Sirach. Or Ecclesiastic, it's chapter 18 and verse 20. Uh huh. Before judgment. The Lord said, look, I'm going to give you a little space right now. Before I come judge that ass, go ahead. Examine thyself. You need to get your stuff together. You better examine yourself. I'm on the way. Yes, sir. 
And we get these micro judgments all through our life that we got to take accountability for. Sir. I just telling the brother the other day, I said, look, bro, let me explain how this go. I know you because he knew, new brother, new brother, been with us for about six, seven months, right? I said, bro, let me explain how this worked. I can repent, but if I robbed a bank two years ago and they come pick me up today, I got to take that judgment. I did it. Yeah. The judgment don't get wiped off the table because now I got a clean heart. Exactly. So you got all of these sins that you done did your whole life. Guess what you're going to do? You're going to carry all them judgments with you into this truth. That's just a matter of fact. You didn't know no better. Well, good. You know better now. Now you got a decision of what you're going to do. You're going to change yourself or you're going to be that same nigga that you was in the world making a, a bunch of rash, bad decisions that eventually going to catch up to you. So before that judgment, you got to examine yourself. Let's move on. Um, so rock 17 and 19. Listen, nothing is worth hiding or overlooking when it comes to sin. Remember, they that break the least of these commandments. Sure. The least. Go ahead, 17, 19. It's the book of Sirach, chapter 17 and verse 19. This right here was, it make your heart beat a little bit faster when you read this. Watch this. Therefore, all their works are as the sun before him. He said, everything that you do is like the sun before you. You can't have the sun. The sun light up the entire sky. Yes, sir. The sun can't hide when it's out. He said, everything you do is like the sun before him. Go ahead. And his eyes are continually upon their way. He said, his eyes are continually watching what you're doing. Ain't no sense of hiding it from leadership. The eyes of the Lord is 10,000 times brighter than the sun. Hold that. Get Ezekiel real quick. Yes, sir. 11 and 5. Here's another. Ain't no sense in hiding it. Watch this. Ezekiel 11 and 5. It's the book of Ezekiel, chapter 11 and verse 5. Mm-hmm. And the spirit of the Lord, and the spirit of the Lord fell upon me uh -huh. and said unto me, speak. Thus saith the Lord. The Lord said, hey, speak this. Tell him this. Watch this. Thus have ye said, O house of Israel. Uh -huh. For I know the things that come into your mind, every one of them. Wait a minute. Read that last part again. For he know what? For I know the things that come into your mind, every one of them. God said, I know what you're thinking about. He said, I know everything that come into your mind. Who, who you hiding from? <laughs> you ain't hiding from leadership. You ain't hiding from the bishops and the deacons. You ain't hiding from the captains. You think you hiding from God. God said, I know the thoughts that come in your mind. Every last one of them. Who you fooling? Walking around acting like you perfect. Walking around acting like, oh, uh, you ain't got nothing wrong with you. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Don't be that leaven. Yes, sir. Go back. It's the book of Sirach, chapter 17. Read verse 20. And verse 20. Uh-huh. None of their unrighteous deeds are hid from him. There you go again. Say, ain't nothing you doing here from God. You can hide it from the leadership. Lord will reveal it eventually. There is no spirit that is not made manifest before him. Yes, sir. Go ahead. But all their sins are before the Lord. Everything you do is before the Lord. James chapter 1 and 13. What is this about? This is about you not being at leaven at the feast. Oh, you can clean your car out. You can clean out the garage. Get all the stuff from up under the bed. Move the fridge out the way. Move the stove out the way. Empty out the toaster. But what about that spirit? What about that inner man? It never fails. It's always somebody that has a gripe right after the Day of Atonement. Yeah. Yes, sir. It is always somebody that have yes, a gripe sir. right after the Lord's Passover. Yes, sir. <laughs> and it's always people that leave right before the Passover. Yes, sir. Hey, I'll tell you what else. There's always them people that don't damn congregate every, every Sabbath that pop up for the Passover. Absolutely. Oh, man, the schools be packed for the Passover. You know why? Because you still got Christmas on your brain. You still got Easter on your brain. That's why. You still got birthdays on your brain. Oh, well, I can't miss Christmas. Yeah. I can't miss Thanksgiving. You didn't yes, treat it the Lord. Who told you to do that? The first high holy day is the Lord's Sabbath. Yes, sir. Then you come in suited and booted on the Lord's Passover. We ain't seen you in six weeks. <laughs> 
<laughs> we ain't saying you. You about to get kicked off the Telegram. You about uh about to be back in visitor status. Yes, now all of a sudden on the Passover, you come wobbling on into the school. Okay. You and your wife and kids. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Where we at? It's the book of James, chapter 1 and verse 13. Uh-huh. Let no man say when he is tempted, uh -huh. I am tempted of God. A lot of y'all be blaming God for what you went through, and a lot of y'all be blaming God for what you got on your spirit. The scriptures say, don't let no man say when he tempted uh, uh, that it's because of God. Right. Go ahead. For God cannot be tempted with evil. Uh-huh. Neither tempted he any man. They say, God ain't do that to you. But what is, what's happening, officer? Read it. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust. It's something that was already inside of you. That ain't had nothing to do with God. Yes, it's already inside of you. The Lord just gave you the scriptures to show you that what's inside of you is evil. Yes, sir. Go ahead. And entice. And entice. So Rock 15 and 11. Let's get the precept for this. Sirach chapter 15 and verse 11. It's the book of Sirach chapter 15 and verse 11. Mm -hmm. Say not thou, it is through the Lord that I fell away. He says, don't, don't be walking around telling people, yeah, it was God because I was praying to God that he could help me get a car and then right. I never got a car. Yeah, you should have took an Uber. You yep. should have took a taxi. Yes, sir. A bike is much cheaper than a car. You could have pedaled. Oh, but you was full of pride. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. It, now you blaming God when really it was something small when you could have overcame it. You failed your trials. Yes, sir. Read it again. Say not thou. It is through the Lord that I fell away. Uh-huh. For thou oughtest not to do the things that he hated. Uh-huh. Say not Listen, he said, don't say it's God because yes. he judged you because yes, you sir. shouldn't be doing what God hates. You know what God hates. Why you do it anyway? You did it anyway. Then you turn around, you blame God. Right. Go ahead. Say not thou. He hath caused me to err. Oh, God did this to me because right. when I lost my job, because I was flirting with women on the job and God judged my black behind. When I lost my job, then I had to uh, uh, get another job and that job made me work on the Sabbath. So now I can't come to the Sabbath. All of this foolishness. Mm -hmm. When all you had to do was keep the commandments. Then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. Yes, sir. Then thou shalt have good success. Sometimes you got to go through that trial or that tribulation because it's going to build your character. The deacon just went into that. Yes, sir. The Lord don't take everything off of your plate. That's how you build your spirit. But you took it as an opportunity to go and sin and blame God for it. Go ahead. For he had no need of the sinful man. He said, because God ain't going to tempt you with sin. Because yes, when you sin, he ain't got no need for you. Yes, go back to James. The book of James, chapter 1 and verse 14. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. And enticed. Give me 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 10. We got to go through it if you want to get strong. You, know, you can't go to the gym, be lifting the bar, and think you're going to get strong. you just been lifting the, the barbell for the last uh, uh, six years. Man, if you don't put some weight on that. But when you put that extra weight on it, it's going to be hard. It's going to be tough. But it's going to build you up. Next thing you know, you got to add some more weight to it. There's some more weight to it. It's the same thing in that spiritual sense, y'all. If you don't go through nothing, you can't build that patience. You can't build that tolerance. You can't build the level of faith that it's going to take when things get really bad. If you can't even make it past, oh, I ain't had no gas in my car. What we at? It's the book of 2 Peter, chapter 2 and verse 10. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness uh -huh. and despise government. And do what? And despise government. The scriptures said in Exodus 16 that they were running their mouth against Moses and Aaron. They despise the structure and the order and the discipline. Yes, sir. They hate the fact that people, when they sin, they got to get put out of the body. Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't understand. It was such a good sister. She never did nothing. She been committing adultery. She got to go. Nobody cared because y'all was uh, workout partners and y'all went shopping together. She got to go. She not above the Bible. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Presumptuous, are they? This is the issue with people that murmur against the leadership. 
they presumptuous. I got the, I got the definition. I got to read the definition because I got it. Give me a second, y'all. I'm going to read the definition of presume. To undertake without leave or clear justification. That's the first one. I'm going to read the third one. To suppose to be true without proof. Mm. That means whatever your mind tell you, you ain't got no proof of why somebody moving the way that they moving. You ain't up there in leadership where you have access to the information. You just suppose something true right. and you ain't got no proof. And your little mind and just ran with it. And now you murmuring against leadership. Then somebody finally said, brother, that ain't how that happened. Now you looking stupid. Because presumptuous are they? Go ahead. Self-will. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Look, you got to be crazy to be speaking evil against the leadership, man. You got to be crazy. But these people not afraid to speak evil. Go ahead. Whereas angels, which are greater in power and might, uh -huh. bring not really accusations against them before the Lord. He said even the angels ain't sitting up there lying on people before the Lord. Go ahead, verse 13. Verse 13, and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness. Oh, we here we go. As they that counted pleasure to riot in the daytime. What God call these type of people? Spots. They are and blemishes. Sporting themselves with their own deceiving. Listen, they are leaven. Mm. They spots and they blemishes. The people that be murmuring against leadership, you want to stay far away from them. They don't win in the end. They don't win. No, sir. You need to stay away from hey bro. Are you you all right? Why well, time you talk, you you talk negative about bro. What's up with you? That's you a murmurer? You presumptuous. The scriptures say you a spot, you a Sir. blemish. Remember the Lord said, get that lamb with no blemish. You a blemish. In other words, you in sin. That's what God said. You like to talk against leadership. Watch this Jude, verse 10. And then we got 30 minutes. We might have to speed up a little bit. Let me see. All right, come on. It's the book of Jude, verse 10. But these speak evil of those things which they know not. Well, well, what did he just call it in that last one? Presumptuous. Yes, to sir. presume. You speak evil of things that you don't know. Go ahead. But what they know naturally as brute beasts uh -huh. and those things, they corrupt themselves. And they are sin themselves. So they got all this all or sin of themselves and they're not afraid to speak about other stuff that they ain't got no idea about. Go ahead. Woe unto them. Uh-huh. For they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for reward and perished in the gang sayings of Korah. They do the same thing that Korah and Dathan did. Murmur. Verse 12. Verse 12. These are spots in your feast of listen, terror. Listen to what it said. These spots in your feast. Go ahead. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Uh-huh. Clouds, they are without water. They keep the Passover with no fear. They come into the school every Sabbath, every new moon, breaking bread. They hear the, the deacon read the scriptures. Sir. This is my body, which is broken for you. Like they hear them read the scriptures and they still break the bread. They still drink the wine. Sir. Knowing that they hate the leadership, knowing that they in all type of secrecy and they ain't trying to repent. Sir. Go ahead. Carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth. What happened? Trees who, whose fruit withereth. You used to be on fire when you came in this truth. Now right. you ain't produced nothing in the last two, three, four years. You done hit your ceiling. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Without fruit. Mm -hmm. Twice dead. Twice dead. Once in this captivity and once in the one that's to come. When Christ get back and you do not receive them blessings. You sure. twice dead. Because you suffered here and now you ain't even going to get the reward at the end. Go ahead. Plucked up by the roots. Plucked up by the root. Let's let's jump ahead. Get me. We're going to get it to some solutions. Second Ezra 16. 76.
Listen, brothers and sisters, we must start to fight. Fight ourselves, fight them demons. We must start to fight. Sir. Don't be afraid to fight. Don't be afraid to fast and pray. And when you're done fasting and praying and you wake up the next day and that problem's still there, don't let your faith wither before the Lord. The Lord is only going to let you go down but so far. Yes, sir. Here we go. It's the book of Second Ezra, chapter 16 and verse 76. Uh -huh. And the guide of them who keep my commandments and precepts, saith the Lord, let not your sins weigh you down. Satan's biggest tool is to get you to believe that you cannot overcome the sin that you battle with. Right. Because some, some of us be battling the same thing four, five, six years. God said, don't let your sins weigh you down. Don't get to the point to where you feel like you can't overcome. So now what you going to do? Just run back in the world? Right. Sister's going to put back on the pants. You know, first thing they do is get on this little blue app right here and change their name back to their old name. You won't know if a sister or brother left this truth. Wait for the name change. Yes, they put that Jackson, Johnson, Williams, mm -hmm. uh, Jerome, Cletus. They put that joint right back on their Facebook. <laughs> hey, that joint go right back up there. Yes, sir. You look on there, uh, Cletus Johnson. Ain't that brother Yasharala been fired? <laughs> His stuff say Cletus Johnson. <laughs> he gone. Yes, sir. I know I'm cracking jokes, but uh, hey, it's, it's serious. Yes, it's real out here. Don't let your sins weigh you down. Go ahead. And let not your iniquities lift them up themselves. Read. Woe be unto them that are bound with their sins. Hey, do not get entrapped in your sins. Scriptures say woe unto them that's bound by their sins. Go ahead. And cover with their iniquities. Like as a field is covered over with bushes, uh -huh. and the path thereof covered with thorns, uh -huh. that no man may travel through. When you get to the point where your sins have overcome you, even your leadership can't get to you. We can't get you out of that 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 uh, path that's covered with thorns and bushes. We can't get to you. Right. You on the other side of them thorns and bushes, and we like, hey, bro, we here. The school's still open every Saturday, and you know you can come back. You can repent. And what they do? Still Cletus Johnson on their Facebook. Now they got a woman with pants. Damn. Now they a rapper. <laughs> then left their kids. Verse 78. Verse 78. It is left undressed and is cast into the fire to be consumed therewith. So rock 14 and 2. Let me so rock 14, 1 and 2. Don't never think that you in a position to where you cannot overcome the sins that you in. You can overcome, brothers and sisters. Sure. But you got to want it. You got to fight. Absolutely. The Lord ain't going to just come down and take that spirit off of you. You're going to have to fast. You're going to have to study. You're going to have to pray. You're going to have, have to have somebody that you can talk to and say, hey, look, this is what I'm dealing with. You know what I'm saying? Brothers addicted to, to porn. Like, bro, when you get that, that thing where you want to turn that video on, pick up the phone, call the officer over you. Find an outlet, find something tangible that you can do so that you're not just running right back to that sin. Start fasting. As soon as you get the urge, start praying. Face the east and just start sending up prayers. There's so many steps you can do than to sit in that house by yourself, scrolling, looking at the phone, looking at, oh, I don't want to touch the phone. Oh, call somebody. Hey, brothers, where y'all at today? Oh, yeah, we're at the school, such and such. Go up to the school with the men. Hey, y'all doing a flyer mission today? I need to go out here on this flyer mission. Idleness teaches much evil. Where we at? This is the book of Sirach, chapter 14, and verse 1. Blessed is the man that hath not slipped with his mouth, mm -hmm. and is not pricked with the multitude of sins. Listen, you are blessed if you ain't pricked with the multitude of sins. Go ahead. Blessed is he whose conscience hath not condemned him. Listen. For you, for sin to overcome you, your conscience has condemned you. You know why your conscience will condemn you? Secret sin. Sorry. You sitting in classes about backdoor marriages all the time at the school, and then you leaving and sneaking with the sister when y'all leave the school. Yeah, your conscience will get you. 
That conscious that everybody talking about, that's that spirit, your spirit telling you, nigga, you know you evil. Nigga, you know you wrong. Yes, sir. These people paying their arms, you stealing. Damn. You telling your wife you with the brothers, you out committing adultery. Now adultery class come, your conscience is defiled. Read it again. Blessed is he whose conscience has not condemned him and who has not fallen from his hope in the Lord. And has not fallen from his hope. Secret sin will cause you to fall from hope. Secret leaven inside of you. Ecclesiastes. Give me nine and four. We ain't getting through this. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. We're going to try. Ecclesiastes it's, 9 and 4. It's the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 9 and verse 4. Uh -huh. For to him that is joined to all the living, there is hope. Uh huh. For a living dog is better than a dead lion. You know what it's saying? It's, as long as you are alive, you got a chance to repent. You got a chance to examine yourself and change your ways. That's what it's saying. Read it again. For to him that is joined to all the living, there is hope. There is hope, brothers and sisters. As long as you join to the living, why? For a living dog is better than a dead lion. You could be the mightiest person in the world. When you're dead, it's over. Yes, sir. A living dog is better than a dead lion. You got a chance today. Second Ezra 7. Second Ezra chapter 7, verse 17. It's the book of Second Ezra chapter 7 and verse 17. Uh -huh. Then answered I and said, O Lord, that bearest rule, uh -huh. thou hast ordained in thy law that the righteous should inherit these things. Listen, the scriptures say that the righteous will inherit the kingdom of heaven. It's ordained in the law that us that keep the commandments, we're going to get that kingdom. Go ahead. But that the ungodly should perish. But the ungodly will perish. Go ahead and watch this. This is the point. Verse 18. Verse 18. Nevertheless, the righteous shall suffer straight things. The righteous, us trying to keep the commandments, we going to suffer. We going to go through some stuff. I don't know who told the brothers and sisters that's coming out of Islam, out of more science, right. out of Christianity, out of Egyptology, that once you put on fringes, your life just going to be peaches and cream after that. No, God going to try you whether or not you're willing to keep his commandments in adversity. Yes, sir. So we're going to suffer straight things. Watch this, though. Go ahead. And hope for what? And hope for the kingdom. Go ahead. For they that have done wickedly have suffered the straight things. Uh-huh. And yet shall not see the why. You telling me your mom and them ain't going through the affliction? Your brothers and sisters and them ain't living a hard life? Yes, sir. That's what it says. It said you won't keep the commandments, you're going to suffer some stuff. They ain't keeping the commandments. Guess what? They suffering too. They steal the children of Israel in slavery, in captivity. The difference is you keep the commandments, so you're going to get the kingdom. Yes, sir. They don't, so they won't. That's your reward. Not the taking away of trials and tribulations, right. but the fact that you stayed with God during the trials and tribulations, you get to live forever. Jump to verse 47. Verse 47. For what profit is it for me and now in this present time to live in heaven? Now we live in heaviness, the afflictions, trials and tribulations. Go ahead. And after death to look for punishment. Then, wait a minute. You went through hell now. And after death, you're going to look for punishment. You know what that's called? Twice dead. That's called twice dead. Yes, sir. That's what that is. You got to go through it. You done went through it all of your years that you've been living. You ain't kept the commandments. You stayed in secret sin, and you knew better. You watching this right now, you knew better. And then you get punished by God? Man, give me the affliction. I'm going to get it anyway. I'm going to go through my affliction while I try my damnest to keep God's commandments, man. To stand up for something that's bigger than myself. A two-time loser, man. Just like Esau that's homeless today. They're going to be Sorry. twice dead, too. I don't get it. You know what I'm saying? You're a white man standing on the corner with a cup. I don't get it. You could go get a shave and a suit and walk <laughs> in the bank and get a damn loan. Like, I don't get it. I don't, they twice dead. Too. Whatever. I, I digress. Uh, Sirach, chapter 18, and verse 30. 
Oh, I ain't got much time. Let's jump. Rock 1721. We ain't got much more time. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 17 and verse 21. Uh -huh. But the Lord being gracious and knowing his workmanship, neither left nor forsook them, but spared them. God know that we jacked up. He know we in captivity, our minds ain't right. He didn't forsake us, he spared us. Go ahead. The alms of a man is as a signet with him, uh -huh. and he will keep the good deeds of a man as the apple of the eye. He will keep your good deeds as the apple of his eye. That's why you got to be encouraged enough to never give up. Go ahead. And give repentance to his sons and daughters. Thank God he gave us repentance. Yes, sir. And we should not hold that or take that for granted. Go ahead. Afterwards, he will rise up and reward them uh -huh. and render their recompense upon their heads. Uh -huh. But unto them that repent. But unto us that repent, what? He granted them return. He granted us the ability to walk around saying, I'm an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. Right. The ability to keep the Lord's Passover, Feast of Tabernacles, to have leadership with wisdom that can feed us with knowledge and understanding. And ain't just making up cool metaphors and motivational speeches on the Sabbath. Because these churches is full of motivational speakers. We get real substance and solutions out of the Bible. That's a blessing. Everybody want the blessing to be I hit the lottery. Everybody want the blessing to be getting a new car. Right. The Lord said you're going to be redeemed without money. Sir. Was that Isaiah 59? Somewhere around now. Come on. And render their recompense upon their head. Uh-huh. But unto them that repent. He granted them return and comforted those that failed in patience. He said, I'm going to comfort you when you fail in patience. I'm going I'm to I'm bear with you. I know you've been struggling with this a long time. I'm going to bear with you for a little while. Get your mind right. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Return unto the Lord and forsake thy sins. Uh -huh. Make thy prayer before his face. And do what? And offend less. And do what? And offend less. We have to learn to offend less. We have to learn how to stop sinning, brothers and sisters. Yes, sir. Because he ain't taking all of us into the wilderness. And when he do, if you do make it, he going to purge the rest of us out in the wilderness. We got to get our minds right. Baruch 418. Sheesh. It's the book of Baruch, chapter 4, verse 18. Mm -hmm. For he that bought these plagues upon you will deliver you from the hands of your enemy. Just like he did in Egypt, he going to deliver us from the hands of our enemies right here in Babylon the Great, in Barbados, in Jamaica, in Nigeria, in Eritrea, in China, in Japan, in India, all over the world. Go ahead. Go your way, oh my children. Go your way. Jump to 21. Verse 21. Be of good cheer, oh my children. Cry unto the Lord. Make sure you're doing your prayer three times a day. Go ahead. And he shall deliver you from the power and hand of the enemy. How? For my hope is in the everlasting, mm -hmm. that he will save you. And joy is coming to me from the Holy One, because of the mercy which shall soon come unto you from the everlasting, our Savior. And the time right now is closer than when we believe that Christ is coming back. Yes, sir. The time is closer than when we believe. Go ahead. For I sent you out with mourning and weeping. Uh huh. But God will give you to me again with joy and gladness. He forever. said, when I sent you out, y'all was crying and begging. Sir. I sent you out mourning and weeping. But when I when I gather you back, it's going to be tears of joy. Laughter. Jubilation. Go ahead. Like as now the neighbors of Zion have seen your captivity. He said, right now they looking at us as slaves, as nothing, as niggas, as specs. They want us all to be Cardi B's and futures. Go ahead. So shall they see shortly your salvation. Listen to what it said. They said they're going to see shortly your salvation. You ain't got much longer. You better endure this thing. Sir. You better endure this thing. They're going to see shortly us. That same boss that's on your back. Them same cops shooting you down in the street. Them same politicians. The ADL and Canary Mission. Shortly. They're going to see our salvation. Go ahead. Which shall come upon you. 
with great glory. Watch this. Hold that. Get Micah 7 and 8. Micah chapter 7 and verse 8. It's the book of Micah chapter 7 and verse 8. Mm -hmm. Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy. Uh -huh. When I fall, I shall arise. He said, don't rejoice enemies of the Israelites. So when he fall, he will arise. We will raise back up. Go ahead. That's right. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. It, yea, though I am in the valley of the shadow of death, yes, sir. the Lord is still our light. He gave us the commandments to get out of this thing, y'all. Yes, That's sir. our power. Go ahead. I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him uh -huh. until he plead my cause and execute judgment for me. Uh -huh. He will bring me forth to the light. And I shall behold his righteousness. He said, God's going to bring me back to his commandments and I'm going to behold his righteousness again. He said, yeah, he punished me then, but he going to bring me back to the commandments. And that's all we can ask for, brothers sure. and sisters. For us to know that we the Israelites and know to keep God's commandments. Man, we winning. We winning out here. Yeah, our bills is high as hell, but we sure. winning out here. Yeah, we struggling to find a job, but we went in. Yeah, our marriages ain't perfect. We went in. We can fix it all with God's commandments. That's right. We went in, y'all. This is the book of Baruch, chapter 4, verse 25. Mm -hmm. My children, suffer patiently the Do wrath. What? Suffer patiently the wrath that has come upon you from God. Listen, the God say, suffer patiently. You got to go through it. Same thing we read in Leviticus 26 and 40. You got to acknowledge that the things that we go through is because we and our forefathers and foremothers sinned against God. So God said, hey, take it. Suffer patiently. You got to do your time. You did the crime. You got to do the time. It's just that simple. It ain't that hard. You try to make it personal. Like God got something against you individually. Like your people don't suffer. Look, us as a nation, we being chastised by the Lord. The Lord said, suffer patiently. Go ahead. For thine enemy hath persecuted thee. Uh-huh. But shortly thou shalt see his destruction. <laughs> he said, you suffer patiently because your enemy persecuting you. But in a minute, you're going to see his destruction. I can't wait for that thing. If it yes, be sir. the Lord's will. That's right. <laughs> yes, sir. All the hell we have been through. Yes, sir. Man, study African-American history. I'm just talking about me, right? Uh, I'm a uh, Stokely Carmichael's and the uh, Fred Hamptons and uh, the Bobby Seals and all our, our forefathers from uh, 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 Nat Turner. Everybody, all of these names that you don't know, they have a book. I think my wife introduced it to me. It was like slave narratives. It's like them actually recording the last of the slaves that were alive and they just telling their story. Man, that it will make your blood boil. Yes, sir. It'll make your blood boil. So hell yeah, they need to get double what they did to That's us. That's right. Where we at? And shall tread upon his neck. All right, we got to skip up. Give me Hebrews. I want 316. We're going to read down. I'm going to try not to interrupt. We're going to try to get through this fairly fast. 316. It's the book of Hebrews, chapter 3 and verse 16. Mm -hmm. For some, when they had heard, did provoke. Howbeit not all they, all that came out of Egypt by Moses. Listen, it said, when Moses took us out, some of us provoked God in the wilderness. Go ahead. But with whom was he grieved 40 years? Who did God was God grieved with for 40 years? Go ahead. Was it not with them that had sinned? That was them that sinned in the wilderness with Moses. Go ahead. Whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? Uh-huh. And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest? He said, y'all not getting in my rest because you murmuring, you in secret sin. Go ahead. But to them that believe not, so we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. They did not keep God's commandments and did not do the things that Moses was teaching us to do because they didn't believe y'all. Right. We have to increase our faith. That's why you got to read four chapters a day. Yes, sir. That's why you got to watch more classes. I know you got your favorite teachers. I know you got the most popular teachers. Our teachers fired. 
sir. best teachers on the planet. That's right. But sometimes you got to tune into the mid morning medicine. Yes, sir. Sometimes you got to tune in the daily bread. Yes, sir. You get what I'm saying? You got to have these classes constantly going to build up your faith. Go ahead. That's right. It's the book of Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 1. Uh huh. Let us therefore fear. Let's say promise being left us of entering into his rest. He said, let us be afraid to do what they did in the book of Exodus. Let us be afraid to go through the same things that they went through. Right. To make the same mistakes that they made. Be afraid. Yes, sir. What do you say? Be very afraid. Yes, sir. Read it again. Let us therefore fear. Let's say promise being left us of entering unto his rest. He then promised us the kingdom. Go ahead. Any of you should seem to come short of it. Any of y'all going to come short of actually making it to that promise. Hold that. Second Ezra 749. Ah, oh, shoot. Uh, yeah, we got time. Read it fast. <laughs> yes, sir. Come so on. Go, second Ezra chapter 7 and verse 49. For what profit is it unto us? If there be promised us an immortal time, uh -huh. whereas we have done the works that bring death. He said, what profit is it us if we know the kingdom coming, but we keep sinning? Go ahead. And that there is promised us an everlasting hope. Immortality. Go ahead. Whereas ourselves being most wicked are made vain. But we can't get it because we sin it. Go ahead. And that there are laid up for us dwellings of health and safety. Uh-huh. Whereas we have lived wickedly. Uh-huh. And that the glory of the Most High is kept to defend them which have led a weary life. Uh-huh. Whereas we have walked in the most wicked ways. All of these all. promises was given to us right now just like it was given to our forefathers and foremothers coming up out of that wilderness and leaving up out of Egypt. Right. We get the same thing. Go ahead. And that there should be so a paradise uh -huh. whose fruit endures forever. Uh -huh. Where is insecurity and medicine since we shall not enter into it. They said, what good is the kingdom if we ain't going to make it to the kingdom? Imagine knowing about the kingdom and never seeing it. Go back to Hebrews. It's the book of Hebrews, chapter 4 and verse 2. For unto us was the gospel verse free. Verse 1. Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of in, entering into his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it. Uh -huh. For unto us was the gospel preached. The gospel was preached to the Israelites. That's who was in the wilderness for 40 years. So when these Christians talk about the gospel, the gospel, the gospel, right. the gospel was preached to the Israelites. For That's unto right. us That's was right. the gospel preached. Side note. Come on. As well as unto them. Uh -huh. But the word preached not preached did not profit them. He said the word the gospel preached to us just like it was preached to our forefathers them in the wilderness. Right. But what? Preached did not profit them. But the word preached ain't profit them. We want it to profit us, brothers and sisters. Right. Learn from them. Those are our examples yes, sir. of what not to do. A wise man learns from the mistakes of others. Go ahead. Preach did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard. Because they had no faith. Right. They didn't do it because they lacked the faith. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You got to get in your Bible so you can examine yourself. So that you yes, can sir. purge out them sins that send you, brothers and sisters. Yes, it's a heavy task that you got. You got to fix you before you can fix the person sitting next to you. It's the book of Hebrews, chapter 4, and verse 11. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest. What's the labor? That first labor you got to do is within yourself. You got to bust your ass to be able to get the kingdom of heaven, man. Yes, sir. I'm just being honest. Excuse my language. I just like to keep it real. For real. You got to overcome everything that's inside of you. All of them iniquities. That ability to run your mouth whenever you feel like you don't know how to shut up. Yes, sir. The, uh, the, the secret sin. The overindulgence in food. Porn. Uh, uh, sex addicts. Yes, sir. Adulteries. Murmuring. Gossiping. You love being in other people's business. You kept Wendy Williams in business. Damn. 
We must fight these things. Come on. Lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. What's the example of unbelief? Them in the wilderness. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Lest any man fall through that same example of unbelief that they had in the wilderness and they left up out of Egypt with that hell on their spirit and got to the wilderness and Lord said, I'm going to leave y'all ass here. Right. You ain't going into the land. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 5 and verse 7. Purge out, therefore, the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump. Listen, get that leaven out of your spirit that you may be a new lump. Go ahead. As ye are unleavened, for even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Because Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Don't be the leaven. Yes, sir. Don't be the leaven, brothers and sisters. Purge that out of your spirit. Mortify your members. Yes, sir. If your mouth always gets you in trouble, learn to shut the hell up. It ain't hard. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Verse 8. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven. Don't keep the feast with the old sin that you've been dealing with for the last two, three, five, seven, ten years, 30 years. Go ahead. Neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness. Uh-huh but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Say, get that sin out of you and come into the feast with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. What's the truth? Keeping the God's commandments, y'all. That's right. Hey, that's my time. I wish I could I wish I wish could keep going, but it's all right. I'm Officer Abishai, IUIC, Indiana. Officer Raphael. Hey, y'all, it's been excellent. Uh, all praise to the Most High for the deacons. Uh, the bishops, the yes, deacons, sir. the captains for giving uh, us an opportunity to be on this morning. Yes, hey, sir. study, pray, apply, apply, apply the things that you have learned. All right. And with that, we say shalom. Hey, shalom. shalom. What is the nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is you. It's Nation Time.